Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Gulf Coast Robotics LED light bar for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, this is something I personally haven't seen a whole awful lot of on uh, any of the other uh, Ender 3s that I've seen around. I did find this on Amazon and it was an unknown amount. Ooh, $35. Okay guys, as you can see here we have the LED light bar. You can see it's an LED on one side. It does have an aluminum body and it does have brackets on each end to attach it. It comes with the uh, T-nuts and screws as well as an Allen key and a little piece of uh, double-sided foam. We will uh, show you what that's for here in a second. And then it has this dimmer switch right here. And as you can see it does have a pretty audible click there to turn on and to adjust your brightness. It is a, a pretty flimsy plastic. It's not super, super sturdy. Uh, I don't see it being a problem. I'm probably gonna set this and uh, forget it. I'm pretty sure that when the switch on the Ender 3 is turned off, uh, this light is also gonna be off as well uh, because of one of the things I actually do really like about it is you're not gonna be dealing with a second cord. You've got an inline double-sided plug here that is going to go in line with that power supply, so you're not having multiple cords messing up your space. Okay, so installation on this is pretty simple. I'm going to just grab the actual light bar here. We are going to go ahead and attach the T-nuts to the screws. Just give it a few twists. The bracket on this light is not uh, closed at the end, so it's not going to be an issue to go ahead and pre-thread these. Should make it a little bit easier for us. And this is going to mount right up here at the top. So I'm going to just take the first one, slip it on here, and go ahead and feed it in. Okay. So interesting. This Allen key does not fit these screws. You can see right here, uh, this Allen key is too small. Shouldn't be a big problem. It's definitely a uh, negative on the product. I do still have all of the initial Allen keys from the assembly. One of the ones that comes with the kit is going to be a good fit for that. So overall, no harm. Doesn't look great on the company to have that as an issue. Then I am going to slide in the key on the other side, tighten it down, and then I'm going to just center this light up in the channel. That looks good right there. Tighten these down. Okay, that looks pretty well centered. Next, we are going to just plug in the outlet right here into the side. That feels like a pretty snug fit. This comes over the top, and this is, uh, the foam is going to go on the back of this right here. Just stick to the back side above the power supply. I'm going to hold off on sticking that on until I am sure that this works. Plugging in the plugs on the back side, and this is pretty straightforward. You just unplug what's there, and the new ones, they plug in well. Let's go ahead, make sure this is off. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and test it out. So first I'm going to check. Okay, so that light does not come on. The switch on the side is off. Go ahead and start it up, and there we go. So that is actually a good amount of light. Of course, you are gonna have a little strip of shadow underneath the uh, actual bar, but that's actually really nice. The dimmer switch works well. You can leave it off. Um, I'll probably just leave it on, on high. Make sure uh, everything seems to be getting power. I'm gonna go ahead and prep for PLA. Okay, so it should be drawing pretty much full power now, trying to get everything up to temperature. And uh, I didn't see any flickering in the light where, you know, we might be pushing the limits of it. I'm going to shut it off just so it doesn't keep preheating. I don't need to get all the way up to temperature. I really like how that is 
Okay, so you can leave it as is, but I am actually going to take the power supply off uh, for just a second because I'm pretty sure I will be able to run this through this track behind the power supply for a much cleaner look. Okay, so as you can see, I've taken the power supply off and I am actually running the cord down the track here. And we're gonna put the power supply back on here, making sure that that uh, power cord stays in the track. And while that uh, is just slightly on there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got enough slack to plug everything in. Okay, everything's tight. I don't see anything being pinched. Looking at the cord underneath, I don't see anything that's going to impede with the movement of the bed. Go ahead and make sure this light works. Beautiful. Now, we can take this on the back and then to the frame. Now that's on there, I'm going to check the movement of the Z axis. Make sure that nothing is going to impede with that. Nothing really traps along this back side here. Okay, there you have it. Everything installed great. The light seems to be really bright, at least bright enough for the type of work we're doing. I don't want it, you know, blinding me, but it's a, a good brightness. I'm going to be able to see the work that goes on. The installation is very clean. Uh, you've just got a little bit of a loop right here. Everything else is pretty much hidden in the T-Track on the back, and the uh, build of the actual light feels feels real solid. It does get a little bit warm uh, leaving it on, but I don't think it's going to be anything uh, dangerous, anything like that. I think it's just those LEDs warming up, but uh, I will continue to watch that. The only issue so far that I'm having with this light is the fact that the company sent the wrong sized Allen key with it. That's minor in my opinion. It is one of those oversights that I don't like uh, about a company. It's very easy to put a Allen key that's the right size in there. They should know their product well enough to do that. Overall, it's a small oversight. If you've gotten one of these Ender 3s or Ender 3 Pros, it came with a kit that had Allen keys in it, and one of those does fit, so you do have the tools to do it. Other than that, it's two screws. It's really clean installation. Switch seems to work well. I'm very happy with the product other than that. Big things I'm going to be looking on before I do a full review on this light is going to be um, the heat that the actual light puts off, uh, which is so far pretty mild. Um, there is a little bit of warmth there, but uh, I I don't believe it's anything dangerous. And then I am also going to be monitoring the plug at the back to make sure that that's not overheating. So far it all looks good. It doesn't look like there's anything dangerous about it. I will take a look at this, use it a little bit over the next couple of weeks and post a review where I actually talk about it overall. Thank you for watching the video. If you did find value in this, go ahead and uh, hit that like button or subscribe to see that review coming up and any of my future videos.